Hello YouTube. I am back. I am sorry this video has took a little while, but today we are going to be illuminating long ribbed socks. Um, when I put the poll up, this was initially done as knee length, which is probably what I'm going to put in the video title as well. Um, but the, what, what I'm actually going to do is give you the measurements and the tutorial for three different lengths because it's exactly the same process. You just need to add a couple of more rows into, well, quite a few more rows, <laughs> depending how long you're doing them, into one particular section. So it's quite an easy adaptation. The ones I'm actually making are going to be what I call boot length. So they're somewhere between ankle and knee length. Um, but I'm going to give you the measurements for those, for knee length and for over knee socks. So you've got all through there. Um, the measurements I'm doing today fit me um, is a general, I'm a very common average size. I'm a UK size five woman's feet. Um, if you want to make them slightly bigger or slightly smaller, um, I would say if you're making child sizes in sort of what I would say man sizes, men's sizes, I'll also give you the measurements for them. Um, as always, well, not as always, we already started doing it last month, but if you do support me on Patreon, there's a link in the description below, um, there will be a written guide um, that goes along with this video as well. So if, if you do support me on there, you can go jump across and download that as well. Okay, so things we will need, and this will come to no surprise, it's very standard now for all my videos. Um, we're working on a 24 peg standard um, knitting loom. This is, if you buy the beginner's packs of four, this is your smallest size you get included. Um, you need a hook, loom knitting hook. Um, you'll need, I've got two, but <laughs> um, darning needles, needle, you only need one. Um, scissors yarn and just something to either a stitch counter or a pen and paper to keep track of of where you're up to the yarn i am using is it's dk it's quite chunky for a dk though it is a standard it's sold as a dk but it is it does feel like it's got a decent weight to it dk or chunky would work very well for this to be honest um aaron i love we i'm getting big into iron weight yarn at the minute but yeah iron weight would work really well as well the yarn i'm using is a fully synthetic one um the reason for this is because when i make socks i wear them in fact i don't think i own shop bought socks anymore i just make more socks um so being able to just throw them into a washing machine without having to do them on a separate wools or delicates wash is a big thing for me um so that's why i'm using this if you want to use yarn that is you know wool silk cotton alpaca and um, the full natural blends they are beautiful things to work with and that's great but don't feel bad about using fully synthetic yarn just because it's it's you're making practical clothing and it's easier to care for and um, also if you're just getting started and there's budget um considerations there's there's nothing wrong with using synthetic yarn yes the the, the wool and the alpaca and the silk is beautiful to work with but you know don't, don't be yarn shamed is what I'm saying here, okay? <laughs> so, let's get started. Okay, first things first, like with many, many of my videos, we are going to make a small slip knot. Ding. And pop it on the little keeper peg. We are going to then cast on by just e-wrapping the entirety of the loom. I really need to learn to get centre pull balls of yarn. It's just easier to work with, but never mind. And results in, you know, when you have yarn skipping about everywhere if you are a person like me who has cats you end up being having your work chased around by very excited kittens which is great fun for them <laughs> but not so much for you okay so i've got a little e-wrap just wrapped around on every single peg there now what we're going to do is our first 10 rows are going to be single rib stitches so I've covered this in a lot of other videos, but as I like to go through everything step by step, here's what we're going to do. So, 
to do a rib stitch on an even numbered loom, it's very easy because you just sort of work in pairs. Um, and it's it's a way to, good way to keep track of things and keep you on track. So what you do is you e-wrap one and then you pull it down across the next one. Yeah. You knit off the first one as you normally would. And then on the second one, you come down through your stitch, you catch the yarn, you pull it up at the top, then you slip the yarn off and put the new stitch you just pulled up on. Okay, so you go round and down, up and over, down and through, off and on, round, down, up, over, down, through, up and on. Round, down, up, over, down, through, off and on. One more time. <laughs> One more time slowly. Around and down. Up and over, down, through, off and on. And you're going to go around just the whole the whole loom like this. Um, you're going to work in the round. So instead of going backwards and forwards, you just keep going round and round in circles. And when you've done that for 10 rows, so working a total of 10 times, um, come back and we'll go from there. Okay, now we have done our 10 ribbed rows. This is what you will have on your loom. Now, what we're going to do next is the main part of the sock. So the main part that is on your leg. Now, if like me, you're doing like long boot socks, you're going to want to do 40 rows for zero. If you want them to be right up to your knee, you want to do 55 rows. If you want them up and over your knee, you want to do 70 rows, okay? Now, those figures can vary a little bit. If you make a pair or you knit down and you go, actually, I want it a little longer, you can play around with that figure. It it won't change the pattern massively. But as a guideline for the number of rows we're about to do next, 44 long boot socks, 55 for knee length, 70 for up and over the knee. Now, what we're going to do next now, these socks, I said, we're going to do ribbed. And these are really elastic. It means they fit to the leg really well and, and don't sag down. So for the next part, what we're going to do is the following stitch pattern. So what I want you to do is E-wrap three and come down and over one. Okay. So we go one, two, three, down through, up and over. Okay, so it's like doing your rib stitch, but you do three normally wrap ones instead of before you do an up and over one, instead of just the one. So you keep going around the room like that, the loom like that. So one, two, three, down and across. Down and through. Yep, I'm going to show you that one more time. It's one, two, three E wraps, one down and across. Knit off your three E wraps, and we'll do down, pull through, up and off on the fourth peg. Okay, so you're going to keep going around and around the loom following that pattern. And again, for boot length, 40 rows for knee length, 55 rows for up and over the knee, 70 rows. So I'll let you go and do those and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, I have now done my 40 rows doing knit, 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 pull, <laughs> knit, 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 pull. Um, you will have, I assume at this point, completed doing however many you were doing depending on how long the sock you want is. So 
given the figures I gave you before. So anyway, we are now at the base of the main part, main leg part of the sock. And what we're going to do now is we're going to work the heel. Now, on a, I've done this before on a couple of videos and shown you one method of working the heel. There are a few methods. So this time I'm going to show you a slightly different one. Now, this method that I'm about to show you does seem to lessen the um, risk of getting weird tensioning on the, the part where the heel meets the um, the main part of the, the sock. Because I know a few people said they get one sort of like hole section, which should sort of self-tension by the time you've worn them and, and kind of washed them once. But this way it does seem to put a little bit more yarn into the process and makes it a little bit stronger. So this is a slightly different way of doing them if you do want an alternative way. So again, it, it's still as simple um, if we do it step by step, which we're going to. So to do the heel, we work pegs 1 to 12. So what we're going to do is we are going to e-wrap pegs 1 to 12. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that rounding out of the way. That should be 12 pegs wound on. We will just count them. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Awesome. Which is half the loom. Now, the way we're going to do it this time is we are going to ignore the first one we wrap there so we're, we're going to just ignore this this stitch sorry this stitch first one there and we're just going to leave both stitches on that peg but the rest of them we're going to knit off There we go. I'm just going to push these down a little. Okay, so I have peg one has two stitches on. At this point, all the others only have one. And we're working where yarn is at peg number 12, which is there. Now, what we're going to do from here is we're going to rewrap, even though... We've just knitted it. This isn't something we do often. We're going to wrap back round peg 12. Like that. And then we're going to wrap all of the others all the way back. Whoop. Up to and including peg number 2. Because peg number 1 already has two stitches on. So then what we're going to do is we're going to ignore the second stitch on peg number 2. That is a lie, we're not. <laughs> oh, come on, I've got to make one mistake in every video. What we're going to do is we're going to ignore the stitch on peg number 12 and we're going to knit all of the others. So, what we're going to, <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to knit peg number 2 back to and including peg number 11. So at this point, peg number 12 has two stitches on, peg number one has two stitches on, all the others have one. And now, like we did with the last time, we're going to come back up and around peg number two, even though we knitted it off. And we're going to wrap along up to and including peg number 11, because peg number 12 has two stitches on. I'm going to hold that out the way. Now, this time, this time, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to ignore peg number two. And we're going to knit off from three, back the way around to peg number 11. Okay. So 
so knitting peg three up to and including peg number 11. So at this point we have two stitches on pegs 1, 2 and 12 and one stitch on everything else. And we're going to come up and round peg number 11. And we're going to also wrap 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4 and 3 because 2 and 1 already have two stitches. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to knit off pegs 3 through to 10. So that is peg 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and leave peg number 11 alone. So we now have two stitches on pegs 1, 2, 11 and 12 and one stitch on all of the others we are now going to come back around stitch three and continue to wrap four five six seven eight nine and ten tuck that out of the way stopping there because 11 and 12 already have two stitches on this gets repetitive i know but it's the easiest way for it to for you to remember trust me <laughs> okay so we are going to ignore peg three because it's the first one we wrapped. We're going to knit off peg four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then we're back to eleven and twelve, which had two stitches on to start with. So now we have two stitches on one, two, three, eleven, and twelve. We are then going to take our yarn, which is at peg ten, rewrap peg ten, as well as nine, eight, seven, six, five, and four. We are then going to knit pegs four, five, six seven eight and nine leaving that stitch on peg ten we are then going to re-wrap stitch four wrap stitch five six seven eight and nine peg ten has two stitches on we are going to knit off peg nine eight seven six and five and leave the stitch on peg four so we now have two stitches on pegs one two three four ten eleven and twelve have i got a twisted stitch no it was just so funny that's fine okay so we are then going to take our yarn which is currently sat at the back of peg nine we're going to re-wrap nine and we're going to also wrap eight seven six and five we are going to then knit off five six seven eight and leave the stitch on peg nine so you now have double stitches two stitches on one two three four nine ten eleven and twelve and four single stitches on the middle on five six seven and eight now we have our stitch coming out of the back of at this point peg five so what we're going to do here is we are going to we are not going to rewrap peg five. We are simply going to wrap six, seven, eight, and nine. Peg nine at this point will have three stitches on. So what we do is we knit the bottom two stitches over the top one as one stitch, and then we knit back on eight, seven, 
and six. We now have the yarn out of the back of peg nine. We're not going to rewrap peg nine. We're just going to wrap eight, seven, six, five, and peg four, which has now three stitches on. We're then going to wrap the bottom two stitches on peg four up and over and treat them as one. And then we're also going to knit five, six, seven, and eight. We now have the yarn coming out the back of peg one, two, three, four. We're not going to rewrap four. We're just going to get out of the way. <laughs> We're just going to wrap five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then tuck that out of the way. Oh, sorry, camera moving. <laughs> Okay, so peg 10, you will see now has three stitches on it. We knit the bottom two up and over, treating them as one. And then we also knit nine, eight, seven, six, five, and five. We then push those down. We now have the yarn coming out the back of peg 10 which we're not going to rewrap we're just going to wrap 9 8 7 6 5 4 and 3 3 now has three stitches on so we treat the bottom two as one stitch knitting up and over and then also knitting off the rest of them until we get to that single stitch okay and push these down and that yarn is now out the back of stitch of peg number three so we're going to wrap four five six seven eight nine ten and eleven eleven has three on treat the bottom two as one stitch up and over and knit the rest of them back until we get to that natural break where we just have one stitch there we now have our yarn coming out the back of peg 11 and we're going to wrap, not rewrap it but wrap back onto pegs 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 three and two we are then going to got three on on two so we're going to knit the bottom two as one and then we're going to knit back until we hit that peg with a single one on we are now go so we have our yarn coming out the back of peg two so we're going to wrap three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve oh, the ends in sight guys when you <laughs> we're going to treat the bottom two as one stitch pull it up and over and then knit all the way back And now the only peg we have two stitches on is number one. So our yarn is currently set out the back of peg number 12. We're going to wrap back onto 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2 and 1. We are then going to knit all of those off and that 
is the heel section completed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that pattern we used before of knit three, purl one all the way around. Because our yarn is already sat on peg number one, we're going to double wrap that. So we come back round peg number one and then wrap three and down across peg number four. Like that. We're going to continue in that pattern all the way around the loom four. Well, for me, I'm going to do it for 12 rows. If you are making these for sort of a young adult um, size, you would do this for 10 rows. If you are doing it for kind of bigger shoe sizes or, or men's sizes, sort of over a size eight or nine, do it for 15 rows, okay? But you're just going to continue this pattern that we used before round. And as I say, I'm doing I'm doing 12 rows. You might want to do 10 if you have little feet sort of under size 3 or 4. Or if it's for a young adult. Or if you're over a size 8 or 9. Or so men's sizes, you're going to want to do it for 15. But I'm a lady size 5, so I'm doing it for, for 12. I'll let you guys go and continue on with this as well. And when you have done the amount of rows that you're doing to make the the foot part of your of your sock I will meet you back here and we will go into the the final part okay we have now done our 12 rows this is the point we are at you might have done 10 you might have done 15 got really huge feet you might have decided to do more that's up to you so we're now at this point anyway now what we're going to do dead easy we're going to do straight a wrap on every peg working in the round for eight rows so we are literally just gonna wrap them all you don't always have to wrap them all. Some people wrap as they go, but I was... <laughs> if I'm doing straight A wrap all the way around, I tend to just wrap the whole loom. <laughs> there we go. And then knit them all off. And just keep going round and round. Working solely in A wrap for eight rows and then I will see you back here and we will finish the project off and do the very little bit of making up there's not much making up on this one okay, okay I've now done those eight rows in plain era <laughs> as you can see the project's got gathered in length and this is what we are now looking at um this is quite an easy makeup or cast off just make sure you've got a nice long tail I normally wrap it around about twice cut that it is then a really easy drawstring cast off so what we do is we take our yarn and we get our darning needle and then we come from obviously we're out the back of peg 24 there we just go down and through peg 1 making sure our yarn doesn't get snagged on anything and pull it through and the same all the way around two to peg three And just keep going round until you're back at the beginning of the loom. Okay. 
Okay, we're almost back round here. You can see where that's coming out. Pick number 23. And finally, back to peg number 24. So we've gone down and through every peg on the loom. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to literally just drop that into the middle there. Take my hook and just lift everything off of the loom. Ooh. Don't worry if when you're taking this off, it feels really loose, like it's all just about to frazzle away. It's fine, it's not gonna. <laughs> As long as you've caught all of those stitches with your cast off, they're absolutely fine. So, there we go. There. Now, we're going to turn this whole thing inside out. Okay. Doesn't matter which end you start from, but everything is going to go like that. And then our needle should be, there it is. At the other end. Now what we're going to do is we are literally going to take this and we're going to pull. That's why it's called a drawstring caster. <laughs> Ta -da. There we go. So this is the toe of our project. So we're going to pull it nice and tight and then we're just going to go straight across to the other side put a stitch in there like that just to make sure it is all closed up nicely and then we're just going to tie this off and work our thread just back along the seam it can be any you know, when you're working in the ends, there's no big, hard and fast rules. But on things like this, I tend to go across the top of the foot rather on the bottom. Because, oh, you can just go down and along. But, yeah, it is really just a case of just working it. So, you know, just catching a few stitches there. Just so we haven't got a really loose, raggedy end on the top. Da -da -da. It. Cut it sorted. Then I'm going to come back to the top of our project where we started, and we're going to find this little loose, this little loose piece of yarn here. And again, we are going to just run. A stitching okay. nice tight knot and then again just as before, we're just working that end in so it's not hanging loose. Hey. And then we can turn your work back in the right way. And we have sock. I feel like I need to zoom out. <laughs> <laughs> on this camera I should shift the way I've got the camera set up so you can see these in all of their glory because they're, they're, they're quite long <laughs> they're not when you put them on though they're really really elastic I mean if you look at the foot you can see where we've done that section where you've got the elastic bit in the middle so it will grip your foot nicely and then you've got that little nice flat stitches on the heel and the toe so it's not uncomfortable and then we've got the main part of our sock and all you need to do is go back to the video at the beginning of this video and make another one and you have your pair. Yeah. Now, as I said, these 
they're very elastic so where they stretch out you can see there the pattern we've got with the three and then the gap um what happens is these will come to kind of on me and i'm a fairly average height and build person these come to a couple of inches below my knee obviously with the, the measurements i gave you you can take them to knee length or above the knee so have fun and i will see you at the next project just a quick reminder guys before i disappear um there will be a written guide to this pattern over on um my patreon um if you support me as a patron you can support me for however much you want there aren't really different tiers but if you do support me as a patron you will get the written guide to this pattern as well